Thibault from France has been paralyzed from his shoulders down for four years. With the help of a so-called exoskeleton, he's now able to move again, but only inside a research facility. He's controlling the machine with the power of his thoughts, for real. Physically disabled people could soon be getting robotic support. One, two, three, four. Exoskeletons have been a popular element in science fiction movies, from Alien to Robocop to Iron Man. They're mostly fictional technological accessories made to give someone extraordinary skills. But the concept could be of great help in real life for people with physical disabilities and especially for tetraplegic patients. And while this exoskeleton is still far from being used in clinics, it could mark a major leap forward. So, how does the suit work exactly? Why is it so hard to develop? And what other concepts are out there? Let's have a look. After he fell 12 meters from a balcony in 2015, the spinal cord of the 28-year-old Thibault, who only identified with that name to the press, was badly damaged. It couldn't transmit signals from his brain to his limbs anymore. He signed in as a volunteer for a series of tests conducted by French company Kleinatech at a laboratory in Grenoble. With the help of the experimental exoskeleton created by the company, he can now control his four limbs again with special signals from his brain. Or simply put, with thoughts. To make that possible, Thibault had to have two wireless sensors implanted in his head. The devices were placed under the skull cap over the brain areas that control movement. Each sensor contains 64 electrodes which collect brain signals and then transmit them to a decoding algorithm. The system translates the brain signals into the movements the patient thought about and sends its commands to the exoskeleton. Here's how Thibault describes the process. Alors dans l'exosquelette, pour pouvoir arriver à faire des mouvements, je fais exactement comme vous. C'est-à-dire quand vous pensez à, à marcher, bah vous pensez à, à bouger les jambes l'une devant l'autre. Et ben moi je fais exactement pareil, c'est-à-dire que mon cerveau s'allume, mais la commande ne passe pas, la moelle épinière, et c'est les implants du coup qui reçoivent l'info et qui font marcher l'exosquelette à ma place. Sounds rather simple, but it is actually very hard to achieve. Previous concepts were, for one, much more invasive. While the implants here are placed over the important brain areas, early attempts put them inside the brain, posing a much higher risk for the patient. Apart from that, studies for mind-controlled movements mostly concentrated on steering one element so far, and not like here, four limbs. So developers were facing a lot of challenges. One of the biggest problems, there is no standard software that translates brain activity into machine movements. It took Thibault and the research team nearly two years to figure out how to make the whole system work. Thibault had to learn how to think exactly the right thought for a certain movement. And the researchers had to keep on refining the software and hardware. For example, they had to capture the brain activity as precisely as possible and to translate the captured information into precise movements. Before using the exoskeleton, Thibault had to train with simple virtual simulations. Controlling the limbs of a virtual avatar helped him to learn to steer into different directions simultaneously. Do you know what you think exactly when you're walking down the street? In terms of what is my left arm doing? When do I have to lift my right leg? This is what Thibault had to learn. On va me demander de faire un mouvement, de le penser, et on va enregistrer en fait l'activité de mon cerveau pendant que j'essaye de faire ce mouvement là, et on va voir si au niveau de l'exosquelette ça donne le même mouvement. Si on voit qu'il y a un petit différentiel, eh bien on va essayer d'améliorer en faisant le mouvement un peu différemment et que l'ordinateur et les algorithmes réussissent à apprendre ce que je veux vraiment faire. Le système now allows eight different directions of motion simultaneously. A really impressive achievement. Another problem, this one couldn't be solved so far, balancing the exoskeleton is very hard. So the tests were conducted with a ceiling mounted harness for balance to guarantee Thibault's safety. And while the results of the study look very promising, researchers say one shouldn't get too hyped about them. The technology is still far from becoming publicly available. And considering the unavoidably high costs of an exoskeleton, it's not very likely they will ever be available to every person in need of one. Still, the findings could be useful in a different context. In the future, they could make it possible to steer wheelchairs with the power of thoughts, which could improve the lives of many tetraplegics.
using brain signals to steer a mechanical suit is without a doubt very fascinating. But using exoskeletons and mechanical limbs to help physically disabled people is not a new idea. This walking assist device, for example, is already being used in more than 200 facilities in Japan. It is used to advance neuromuscular recovery after a stroke. Exoskeletons from the Israeli company Rewalk have been commercially available for some time. They are supposed to help people with spinal cord injuries walk upright again. And the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence is working on a solution for the whole body. Apart from that, more and more tech companies are developing exoskeletons that are supposed to support workers in physically challenging jobs. For example, in warehouses. So, Chances are high that the technology might really make great progress in the near future. And from that, medical research will definitely benefit as well. What do you expect of the technology? And what would you use it for? Let us know in the comments. And if you've got a digital topic that you'd like us to cover, let us know as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.